like to welcome everyone to San Jose Word of Faith uh, Christian Center. Uh, my name is Mr. Minister Roger Crony. Uh, I will be uh, giving the message today in the pastor's absence. Um, it's an honor to bring you the message this morning. So uh, let us pray. Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God. So this day, Lord God, you opened up our eyes, Lord God, to see another day, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. Lord, bless me, Lord God, that I give the message today, Lord God. Lord, let everything be done decently and in order, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Uh, today's message is uh, the peace that exceeds understanding. Uh, this message, I think, is relevant uh, for what's going on in the world today with the COVID-19 and we got a war in Ukraine and, you know, and we we try to kind of navigate our lives through all these issues. And, you know, if people having health, health issues, family issues, uh, job issues, employment issues, you know, so sometimes you need to reach out and ask the Lord to give me peace on certain situations, certain circumstances. So uh, let us turn them, your Bible to John 14, uh, 14th chapter, 27th verse. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, sometimes we have to whisper that word of peace. You know, you whisper that word to yourself and you can almost feel your heart relax. You know, when you're at peace, you feel an inner confidence that, you know, things are not running wild in your life. Regardless of the circumstances, your mind is set at rest. Your heart doesn't flutter with anxiety. Your focus becomes clear. That's the peace of God coming over you. You know, far too often, you know, we find it that it's hard to find peace with everything. We get so many distractions in life. We have so many things going on and we never sit still. You know, we as Christians, we chase after peace a lot. And, you know, it we seems like peace is something that rare is, is, is rare to us. You know, we can't find real peace, but until we decide to take up God's word, because he plain our states it, peace I give to you. And that's in his word. Second uh, Thessalonians 3 and 16 says, now, now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord will be with you all. Peace he give to you at all times and every way. And, and that's every way, every circumstance, every situation you're going through, you know. So God is promising you peace. So let's 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 break that down for a minute. Uh, we discover to discover the secret of peace, you have to be steadfast. To lean, and steadfast means to lean on for support. Or your, it means your to to frame or for, to form. Together, this means give God will give complete peace if you if your frame of mind leans on Him and you're supported by Him. Let me repeat that: God will give complete peace if your frame of mind leans on Him and you're supported by Him. You cast all your anxiety, your burdens upon the Lord because he cares for you. So on what are we leaning? We're leaning on God. That is the steadfastness of mind that you're trusting in him. You know, when you trust in the Lord, you, you know, you're, throwing, you're throwing yourself down. Just as you do when you're playing the trust game, when you're falling back on someone and you're waiting for them to reach out and catch you. That's what you're doing with the Lord. You're playing the trust game. You're saying, Lord, are you going to catch me if I let this go? Are you, are, are you going to be there when I let you go? When you trust in God, you're refusing, you're refusing all the crutches. You're leaning your entire weight on what on, on the Lord's stability of you. 
and saying, will the Lord hold you up? That means God said he is your everlasting rock. Isaiah 26, three and four saying, to, uh, yeah, three and four says, you keep him, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind stay on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. That's giving everything to the Lord, trusting in him, no matter how hard it is, no matter how hard the situation is, the hard the circumstances is, things happen in life, situations happen in life. You know, recently, um, I had just lost my job with the company I was working with. And the Lord had told me, and we was in prayer, and I, I said it in prayer, I said, you know, I think my assignment's over. I feel my assignment's over. Everything the Lord wanted me to do, I think it's over. And the very next day, they released me from my job. They, re they reduced out my position, released me from my job. And I had peace upon the situation. You know, the, the president, the new president of the company, I didn't like him. And he didn't care too much for me either. And uh, after I had left, he was asking everybody, he said, well, he took it, he took it too well. He was looking for a reaction out of me of, of me being angry or mad. But the reaction he got was, thank you for the job. You know, I hope everything goes well with the company. You know, it's been great working here. That's what I stated to him. But the reaction, he could not believe because he wanted a different reaction because of how he felt about me. But the Lord had gave me peace upon the situation. Was I always like that? No. There was, I was in, when I worked at Tesla, I had a situation where you, in corporate, you know, you email somebody something, then they add 50 emails to it to make you look bad. So, you know, and I wasn't even at San Jose where to fail. I wasn't even in church yet. So the guy kept emailing, you know, trying to make me look bad in the email. So I took it upon myself. I, I walked up front, walked to his desk and tapped him on his shoulder. I said, say it to my face. For a whole year, I had to hear that I was an angry black man because of my actions. So, you know, we have to act a certain way. This time I acted the correct way to where he could not understand why was I acting so nice, so polite about a job that I was losing because the Lord gave me peace upon the situation. He pretty much told me ahead of time so that I would have peace upon the situation. Because he said he would keep you in perfect peace who mind stay on you because you trust in him. Just the same way that God gives you one job, he'll give you another. God will open doors that no man can open for you. He'll close doors that, man, that no man can close for you. Our faith does not rest in man, but it's in the power of the Lord. It's what God is doing in your life. The Lord said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by him and he delighted in his way. He's delighting in your way. He will show you which ways to move. He's navigating you through certain situations, certain circumstances in your life. That's what the Lord does for you. He knows the plans he has for you, declares the Lord. Plans of welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. All we gotta do is trust in the Lord. He's your rock. So he said he'll, the Lord said he'll guard you. He'll watch over you. He does this and that, that's how he gives you perfect peace. In the Hebrew word, we call him Jehovah Shalom. Literally, Shalom means God will guard you with Shalom, an unending security, uh, uninterrupted rest, a complete calmness about situations, circumstances. Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom translated means the Lord is peace. He is your peace. And that's in the Old Testament. That's the name that was given to him by Gideon. If you remember the story, story of Gideon, Gideon was a coward. He was hiding when the Lord, the angel came to him, you know, and he provided that altar and called, called him Jehovah Shalom. When, when, and he appeared him in the 
Ophram in, in, in Judges chapter six, is where it happened that. If you read that, you'll see Jehovah Shalom, he gave him peace. A man who was a coward who was hiding at the time, but it's not what man thinks of you, is what God thinks of you. Now, what, is it, what does it mean, Jehovah Shalom mean to a Christian? Shalom primarily means that it signifies wholeness. It's Christ's perspective of you. It's peace with God. The peace of God, it can mean a harmonious relationship between men and men or between man and God. Therefore, rest and contentment in the word of God. So we have to understand, you know, God loves each and every one of us. And we that peace is what we're looking for. We're searching for. We're wanting it in our lives. We're going through so many circumstances, situations. You know, it's like a never ending story to you. It's like you get you get out of one hole and here comes another hole. You get out of one situation and here comes another situation. But we have to look at it in perspective. It's always to move us to another level. You never stay in the same place. If you're a true Christian, a true believer in God, all those who desire to live godly in Christ will be persecuted, will be persecuted. You know, I always uh, laughed at the laws when I was a police officer in Kentucky, I always laughed at the laws. They had a DUI law that stated that if a man is driving a vehicle, I may arrest, which means I don't have to arrest him. But if he's riding a bicycle, I shall arrest. I always laughed at that law, but you would think you cause more damage in a vehicle than you would on a bicycle. But on a bicycle, you cause harm to yourself. So if you're riding a bicycle, I have to arrest you. No ifs, ands, buts about it. But if you're in a, but if you're driving a car, I don't have to arrest you if you're having a DUI because you're causing harm to someone else. I always thought that that was odd. But if you look at the word of God, he's saying that, you know, that you shall. Everything is of the word of God is shall. It means it will happen. You have to do this. So to get, to get peace and complete calmness with the word of God, you know, you have to lean on him. You have to trust in him. You know, you have to understand that, you know, you, you sometimes you're looking in the wrong place to find the peace. But Paul says God's peace surpasses all comprehension. It's not found in mind control. It's not found in managing situations. It's not found in Buddhism. It's not found in other religions. It's found with God. God said this is a gift he gives to you. You're not meditating. You're trusting. Get it? So uh, we look at Philippians 4, 6 through 9. The, Lord, the word of God says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. That means you're saying something, you're speaking it out. You know, a, a closed mouth don't get fed. You know, you are asking for the, you know, the children's bread. The only way you can get the children's bread, you have to ask for it. You have to say something. You know, uh, seventh verse. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Surpasses all understanding. But you made that request to the Lord. He's telling you, make the request. And then the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Let's go to the eighth verse. Finally, brethren, whatever is pure, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditation on the word, meditating on these things gives you peace. This is pretty much the scriptures is an instruction for the believer. 
Whatever's just, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever things are good report. Meditate on these things. Why would you think about things that hurt you? What would you think about things that harm you? You're keeping your mind, you know, boggled down with things that should not even matter to you. Things you're supposed to have casted up on the Lord. When he's saying, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good reports. Meditate on these things. Ninth verse, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. The God of peace will be with you. The only way you can do this is read your scripture. The things you've learned and received and heard and saw in me. He's talking, talking about the Lord. These things, these you do. Do the things of God. This is where you will find peace. That's where you will find peace. I'll tell you one time I was, um, uh, I was feeling really, really down. And uh, really I was going through a lot of things. Uh, and I said, I need to get out the house. I had to get out the house. And I, and I prayed about it and I said, Lord, lead me somewhere. And uh, I went to, go, went to go shopping for a suit. I went up to k g Fashions in Oakland. Went up there and uh, I seen a uh, Boston market. I went over to, I seen, I said, let me give me something. Here. I went to Boston market. So I went over there and there was a guy on a set of crutches. I went in and I got me something to eat. When I came out the door, the man said, can you buy me something to eat? And I kept walking and I thought about what he said. And I said, what did you say? He said, can you buy me something to eat? And I said, yeah, sure. Come on. So I took him to the counter. I said, order whatever you want. And I said, well, what happened to you? He said, uh, I was, you know, I was walking across the street and a car was coming and I took off running and a car came around the other car and hit me, you know, and broke my leg. I said, oh man. And I said, you know, can I pray for you? And I prayed for him right there at the counter. Uh, didn't care about who was watching. I just did it. That's what the Lord said, just do it. I just did it. And I closed my eyes and I opened my eyes and he was staring me dead in my face. And he said, what church you come from? Because <laughs> he knew, because he felt it. And he, he, he just was astonished that I even did that because he's never seen that before. But when I did that action, did something that the Lord wanted me to do, I got peace. At that moment, everything I was going through had went away. All the hurt and pain goes away. It leaves because I'm doing the things that the Lord wants me to do. I'm keeping my mind pure. Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good reports. That's all the Lord is saying. If you want peace, do the things, do these things do. So in circumstances, you know, that's what happens. When you get frightened in situations and you feel panicked, you know, trust in the Lord. When things are outside of your control, give it to God. He promises that because he is Jehovah Shalom. If you lean your full weight on him, you know, and not yourself. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 states, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Today, we choose, today we choose that, you know, distractions, you know, things that disturb you. You know, we need to intentionally give things to God and release our grasp on things. We're trying to hold on to things and we need to just let it go. How would you, you know, how would you find peace in the midst of a storm. You can't find peace in the midst of a storm because Jesus said, you know, peace be still. And the storm ends. Jesus said, peace be still and the storm ends, which, which signifies that he gives it to you. You know, it is possible to have peace and calmness when events are around you, you know, but you have to ask the Lord for it. You know, peace ends up being a request, you know, for you. 
we have to understand, you know, the Lord loves each and every one of us. You know, when sometimes we feel all alone and our body seems is made of stone and we feel we can no longer, you know, be, then we just kneel down and we ask God, Lord, give me peace upon this situation. It's a prayer. You know, when we have, we've done all we can do and nothing ends up going right for us and our faith is waning or we don't have faith at all and it seems no one cares. We just ask God, God, Lord, give me peace upon this situation. When our heart aches for a friend, you know, in need and we want, we want to help them, but, you know, so, you know, to do some good deed, we're feeling helpless with nothing to say. We just bow our heads and begin to pray, Lord, give me peace upon this situation. When we lost a friend, you know, and we think the world will surely end, you know, with this war going on and thing, we think it's end time when all the love is gone and we're left alone and no one visits and no one calls us, Lord, give me peace upon this situation. We don't have to be so lonely. We don't have to, you know, come if, if, if we're all alone. We say, Lord, give me peace upon the situation. When we're sick and we want to die, we're so afraid that we don't even, we don't, we don't know why. We don't care. You know, you know, our sisters and brothers are not coming around. You know, mother and father is gone. We say, Lord, give me peace upon this situation. You know, Psalms 23 and 4 states, Yea, I walk through the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my hand with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Do you feel that? How many of us walked through the valley of the shadow of death and the Lord was there? He shined a light upon you. He comforted you. He's riding his staff was there. You know, God never plows the soul of a woman or man without the intent of his good plans. When you feel that the plows, sharp blades are cutting you, don't let your heart become afraid. Just down your bow your knee and say, Lord, give me peace upon the situation. He'll hear you. He'll forgive you. And he'll give you reasons that you should be glad to be alive. He loves you. He's always there. He surrounds you everywhere. When all you got to say is, Lord, give me peace upon the situation. When you're happy at all times, you know, when you don't, when you don't seek him, but every day we should, just say, Lord, give me peace today, you know, upon this situation. Peace that surpasses all understanding. He says, ask it and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find it. Knock and the door will be open to you. For, for everyone who asks, receive. For everyone who asks, receive. He seeks and finds. To him who knocks, the door will be open. That's the word of God. Romans 8 and 6 says, for, the, for to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Put your mind on the thing of the Lord. When life brings you to your knees and you feel so hopeless and helpless, so filled with disillusion, you might feel that only place you can look up is to the sky. While you ask God, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Remember, I quoted it. You know, all those that desire to live godly in Christ will be persecuted. What makes you no different than anyone else? He's just trying to put you on another level. He's trying to say, be patient. Know that God does not favor not one human being. God does not play favor. God has no personality. If he'd done it for one, one, he'd do it for you. All heartfelt requests can come from anyone. Anyone can ask God for whatever. Ask, asking is just the first half of an answered prayer. 
You have to speak it. You have to say something. The second half of the praying that moves God more than anything is, is actively trusting in the Lord, actively trusting that he is going to answer what you ask for, providing you really need it, what you're asking for, what you're really needing, what you're really wanting out of the Lord. God said, let your petitions be known. Let your requests be known to him. Because, you know, Satan doesn't want you to have a fruitful prayer life. He doesn't want you to have anything. He wants you to just keep struggling so you so you lose all trust. The less confident, he wants you to be more or less confident in God and that God would even answer that prayer. That's what he's really wanting. He wants to, you know, drive your confidence down. Satan is constantly after to, to get your confidence, diminish your prayer life. He doesn't want you to ask for anything. He doesn't want you to have anything. God says you should live life and live it more abundantly. That's what the Lord is telling you. Just trusting and believing, you know, don't stop asking God, you know, he gives you that wisdom, that knowledge. He said, if you're lacking anything in life, he said, if he doesn't have it, he'll create it for you. That's, that's, that's a powerful thing there. He'll create it for you if you don't have it. You know how, I, you know, I, uh, when I was first got here to California, well, let me tell you how I got here to California. I was a police officer in Kentucky. The, I graduated top of the academy, top of the academy, top 80% of the academy. And, uh, and while at the academy, I graduated with my bachelor's degree, with honors, at the same time. And then I'm working the streets, and then the captain calls me in his office, and he says, you know, they're going to release me from being a police officer. I've been there almost a year. And I said, okay. I didn't know why, but I had peace about it. Didn't understand it. Didn't understand it. But he said, oh, I wasn't responding to training. Didn't make sense to me at all. But when the things, some things don't make sense. But two weeks after that, you know, Tesla, a man from Tesla called me. They had a facility down in Clarksville, Tennessee. And uh, he said, uh, he called me and he said, I want you to come in for an interview. And I was like, okay, I'll come in for an interview. I go in for an interview and uh, he starts explaining his job about die casting to me. And I said, I stopped him five minutes in. I said, sir, I really don't know nothing about this job. He said, it don't matter, you're hired. Hired me on the spot. Now, the Lord knows my heart. He knows I would never quit a job. So sometimes the Lord will push you out of a position so you can take another position to get you to a position. So they fired me from the police department because he knew I wasn't going to quit. He provided a job at Tesla. The man gave me a job, with a job that I didn't have no experience on, just gave it to me. Within that job, I moved to California. I do such a, a good job in it. The vice presidents fly to Clarksville, Tennessee. They say, you've done such a good job here. We want you to come to California. And I make my way to California. They paid for everything. Paid for everything. Moving everything to come to California. That's the way God works. He pushes you out because sometimes he knows your heart. He knows your mind. You don't want to leave position. You're not going to leave position, but he has to push you out. He has to get you out there because you're not going to do it yourself. Same way with this job. This job ended just all of a sudden. Well, my expectation that the Lord provide another position. Yes, he will. Because within this position, I moved up positions to a higher level than where I was. So, you know, we don't go down with the things of God. We go up because God is always providing. He said he'd do above and above all that we ask or think. He knows your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what he puts in you. He doesn't waste one thing that he's put inside of you. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us to understand the perspective. You need to know 
that you are a part of God whose spirit is inside of you every breath you take. Religion can never take, take away this connection. Sometimes we become too religious and we're not, we, and we're thinking, we're thinking the wrong direction. We're not like the Pharisees. Believe in God. It's an individual relationship between you and God. Whether, you know, it is not a religion that gives you connection to God. God works in you. He just in us is greater than he just in the world. And through you at all times, all things are God. God is a power for all knowing. And that God is going to answer your prayers. He determines it, it needs to be answered is the different, oftentimes never receiving anything. He knows what you need in your life. He's not going to give you something that's not going to need. He's not going to put you in a position where you're going to fail. He's going to put you in a position to where you're going to exceed. You're going to learn something. And he might pull you out of the position to move you to another position where you're going to excel and you're going to learn something else. But you're always going to succeed when you have God on your side. Man, our minds, it might seem impossible, but to God, nothing is impossible with the things of God. So we have to always understand that peace that exceeds understanding. He will give you peace upon every situation, move through every situation, every circumstance. You can never be a failing Christian under the things of God. When you keep your mind set on the things of God, when you're doing the things of God. So keep your mind focused. Amen. Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161-28. Or you may request information via our website at www.sjwofcc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.